What is up, guys? It is Stu, and this is another episode of the What the Fuck Gym Talk podcast. Those of you guys uh, watching on Spotify, you'll be in for a treat, or YouTube. Those of you guys listening on Apple Music, cut that shit out and get the podcast over on Spotify so you can see the visuals today. So I'm going to talk to you today about um, comp plans and how to use the 50-30-20 model and grab the living expenses that are actually within your market of where your gym is to determine a, a good comp plan. So this morning I wake up and I'm reviewing one of my clients' uh, conversations and we're having this conversation about a comp plan for his team of trainers and they are in the inner city of Chicago, Illinois. Not a cheap place to live. So when we're doing this, what I like is a 50-30-20 model. And so all this is, if you go to Google it, so that it would look like this. So just Google this. How to determine livable wages for an individual 50-30-20. 50-30-20 is a common financial formula used to determine compensation or what you should do with your money. And essentially it just means 50% of your income should go towards your needs. Those are your living expenses. That's your rent, maybe your car payment, um, your groceries, you know, the clothes on your back. Okay. Those are living expenses, right? The big ones, your utilities, all that. Then you put 30% of the money and that's going to go towards your wants. The shit you want that's going out on the weekends with your buddies, that's you know, getting yourself a new guitar, whatever the fuck it may be, all right? That's like your personal spending, that's your discretionary um, uh, spending or discretionary income. And then 20% goes to paying off current debt if you have it, or when you don't have debt anymore, you put it towards savings. So if you like that model, and there's fucking there's a dozen different models like this, but I generally use this 50, 30, 20. You could easily then go ahead and determine, okay, but for my city, how do I know what a good compensation plan is? What's a livable, like how am I gonna provide someone a livable wage? Well, Gemini right here, so Gemini is awesome. It allows you to go ahead and uh, it's essentially chat, G, yeah, chat GPT for Google. And so I, I use both. Um, I like Gemini for certain things, but I just went in here and put into Gemini, what are the average living expenses for a young professional living in the metro area of Chicago, Illinois? And we can get way more specific here. And we could ask it several different prompts and then take an average of its results. But it went ahead, it gave some housing numbers. Um, I could have gotten more, I probably should have gotten more specific to like the neighborhood for this particular gym, but you guys can get more specific than just the broad city because you're gonna get a range. It'll show other expenses here. But essentially what it's saying is that including rent and living expenses, the living expenses for, for a young professional are probably around you know $2,600 a month ballpark, okay? That seems a little on the low side. I probably should have been more specific in the prompt, but let's just say I like that number, right? Let's just say I was gonna go ahead and say, okay, 2,600 bucks, cool. Well, if I need 2,600, 2,618, and that's the living expenses. If I need that to be 50% of what someone makes, well, we all know how to do that math, right? $2,618 divided by 0.5 equals, they need a paycheck of $5,236 a month in order to follow the 50, 30, 20 format. Now, where this goes in terms of what you do as an employer, right? And how you create your comp plans. Remember, there's four ways to compensate people. You are either gonna give them a salary. A salary is, I am giving you a set amount of money for a set amount of work. It is recurring on some schedule and cadence, okay? There is performance or commission. I'm gonna give you a percentage or a set amount of money when you achieve a, set, a specific KPI, a key performance indicator. Generally, see, we see this in sales, maybe if we hit certain revenue or profit numbers, maybe if you have certain retention goals, whatever it may be. Number three, you have hourly. I will pay you a set amount of money or set percentage of something. Generally, it's a set amount of money for every hour or half hour, whatever it is that you work, okay? And then there's barter. Barter is just, I will not pay you anything, but I have something you want, you have something I want, and we are gonna exchange these two things. All of these are viable compensation models. There's not one that's better than the other. Don't let those cocksuckers that you hear tell you, uh, you don't barter with coaches, that's not professional. You're 100% right. You're certainly not gonna grow a professional anything with a barter. But for some of you gyms that have front desk staff, cleaning staff, you have like these little, 
low skill labor tasks. Barter is incredible. Gyms that I work with in big inner cities where they have access to a lot of people, many of them who would be great members but they can't afford it because they're bartenders or massage therapists or whatever, they turn into great front desk staff or greeting staff or social media people or brand ambassadors or whatever. Barter or energy exchange, as I like to call it, it is not a... Um, what would you call it? Not a uh, not something to be embarrassed of. It is not a you know a shitty compensation model. If you're trying to barter with your GM or your head coach, then yeah, you, you've got the wrong comp plan for that individual. But for many roles within a micro gym, especially a larger org chart micro gym, more people on the bench from an HR perspective, barter is completely acceptable. But for any of you guys looking to create comp plans. I recommend the 50, 30, 20 model. Use Gemini or some other AI program to research on your own what those living expenses are. And then it'll give you a good idea as to how much money somebody would need to make if they were working for you full time, which does not mean 40 hours a week. Okay. This is not a nine to five job, kids. This is a 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. job. So it's generally eh, a little over 40. And then um, number two is. Uh, if they're gonna be full focus, meaning you're their only gig, right? If you like, cause that's mainly what we want. We don't want someone who's, you know, working for us full time, but then also doing Uber eats on the weekends and bartending on Saturday nights. That's not gonna work out well. You're gonna, that person's gonna get burnt out. So um, for full focus, full time employees, this is one way of creating a compensation model. Uh, hope you guys found this helpful. There is a whole course of this inside of Microgym University. If any of you guys have never been through that, I highly recommend it. If you ever want to get on a call to discuss compensation plans specifically, shoot me a DM on Instagram or head over to WTFGymTalk.com, book a call, and uh, I'd love to get on jam with you. Talk soon. Oh, talk soon. <laughs> Until I see you in the next episode, fuck faces. Have a great fucking day.